from Epicent Studios. This is the Deuce Podcast. I'm Brad. And I'm Jeremy. And we are doing episode 85. Jeremy, we are in the middle of our kaiju. We um, are. Yeah. Section, you yes. would say. And we are doing, what are we doing? We are doing uh, Rebirth of Mothra 2. Re- Rebirth of Mothra 2. Yes. Now, you were telling me that this not, I mean, this is a sequel to Rebirth of Mothra, obviously. Yes, yeah. It's not the original Mothra, because Mothra was uh, like a, kind of like uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, kind of in a way. It's like one of those things that kind of, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, the, there was a... That got introduced through something else. Yeah, there was an original Mothra movie. Uh, and then, but that's not number. There was an original one, but was there a sequel to that? Uh, well, <clears throat> the second appearance of or is it yeah, Mothra like, like, was Godzilla yeah. versus the Thing, right. or Godzilla versus Mothra. Um, <clears throat> and so it's kind of like Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Yeah, uh, but we already did one that was you know from around that era in the sixties. So we thought you know <laughs> uh, we we go to the later version right. of. Uh, so, so we're yeah. I mean, we, we, we're doing sixties now. We're doing nineteen ninety seven, which is when this movie came out. Yes, um, and we are going to do two thousands. Yeah. So, so this was this was like a reboot trilogy uh, that they had. Um, so it is. Yes. Yeah. It's like a rebirth one. So, <clears throat> so there was a a new guy came in. Uh, and started in like he wanted to do uh, a new Godzilla run, and so in 1992 uh, he did a uh, movie. They were going to do Godzilla versus Angiris again. Uh, Angiris? Yeah, I got Angiris once. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Ugh, my heart it was like heartburn, right? Yes. Yeah, so that's what Angiris what it is. is? That's Angiris. Okay. Yeah. It was just it was just Angiris. Godzilla. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> My Ain't heart, heart is, yeah. is burning. Is on fire. Angiris. Yeah, right. Um, ba, ba, anyway, so uh only we could make an Oak Ridge voice <laughs> reference while doing kaiju movies. So uh in ninety two they did a movie. They was gonna. They <laughs> wanted to bring back Angiris, um, but the the studio said no because they just had like a movie that came out before that that was uh, did not do well, and it had like a, a it had a antagonist who people didn't know. It was like a new character. So, what does Angiris look like? It's Angiris from the movie we just watched. Oh, just watched. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, they just brought Angiris back. Okay. Yeah. So, which I was like, I'm on this shit. movie. I'm not on the last movie. <laughs> so, they had Angiris, and the studio said, no, you should have somebody who people know pretty well and like. like. And so they. And so they studio, thought George Hamilton. <clears throat> perfect. Yes. Wow. He's just like, hey, everybody. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so that was, they had a 92, they had Godzilla versus Mothra. Uh, and then Mothra showed up again, uh, in Godzilla versus Space Godzilla. Uh, that's Jason X. Pretty much. Yes. And so Godzilla versus Space Godzilla. Godzilla that really is a movie. Godzilla yeah. versus Space Godzilla. Yes. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, it was from. It, it's it's like a Godzilla, but with like giant like crystals in its shoulders and head and stuff. Uh, I'll show you a picture later. No. Uh, yes, I will. No, you can't stop me. Yeah. <laughs> so they were like, you know what? People have been really responding well to Mothra, so let's do a rebirth of Mothra, you know, movie, and they end up making a trilogy. Um. I don't call it a trilogy. I call it a thrillogy. Do you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This movie. <laughs> this movie is like. I don't know how to describe this movie. It's very trippy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You've never seen these movies either, have you? I haven't seen the the trilogy. The, no. The trilogy. The the kind of <laughs> reboot of Mothra, yeah. in the late nineties. Yeah. And let me tell you, it's fantastic. <laughs> 
It is Actually, wonderful. I did. It is like as much as I'm like, what the hell? I did enjoy it. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Um, I was like you. I was like, what the hell is going on? But part of me was kind of like, I'm in it for the ride. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. Like, oh, okay, sure. Like, I kind of. <laughs> it was. I'm gonna so tell you. Out. I had fun with this movie. Yeah. Is it a great movie? No, but I had fun with it. Yeah. Isn't that what a movie is supposed to do? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so and I figured this out. So the Rebirth of Mothra trilogy. Um, so people did not respond so well to this because the way they rebuilt. To the reboot, the Rebirth of yeah. Mothra? Then why did they make three of them? Well, people, like the hardcore fans had problems. Right. I could see that they would. <clears throat> and it was because they, they did a couple things. The original Mothra <laughs> costume had multiple people working it inside, yeah. like working the arms. So it was very like. It looked better. Uh, this one is just much more of like a puppet going around, and its yeah. legs are like more talony, and it just kind of like jerks back and forth instead of actual like moving. Um, I've had Saturday Saturday nights <laughs> like that. Anyway, no, like what did I say? It looked like a Munchie Chi that was trapped in Chernobyl, <laughs> like a Chernobyl <laughs> Munchie Chi. <laughs> so you didn't hear me when I said that, but that's no, what I, I said. Heard, I was like, what did you say about a Manchi yeah. And you were like, said, no, no. Chernobyl Manchi <laughs> It really did, though, didn't it? Like Mothra? <laughs> but it, still kind of cute. Like, it, it looked like a Wuzzle was parasailing. Yeah, a Wuzzle. That's what they're called, Wuzzles. Where the, like, the animals that were like, like the together. Hybrids. The hybrids. Yeah, it looks like an, I couldn't it looks remember like an owl eagle. The Wuzzle? That's parasailing. Yeah. That's like... That's, Look, I'm going to assume fans did not like this movie. It's, it seems like it's a little too cutesy for them. Well, okay, but part of it was, yes, I think that was the case. And there's always like there's always been an element of that kind of like innocence to to Mothra. Mothra was always pretty much portrayed as like a, a protector. Uh, and that's the thing. Like, it, it was always supposed to be an island protector. Uh, it protects the islands around Japan, and it protects Japan and the, and the Earth by proxy. Um but in this series, they made Mothra come from space, uh, and people did not like that. Yeah, that seems kind of and odd. and the little the little fairies like the the other. What'd little, you call me? You heard me. Okay. The little, little spirits that are that were with Mothra before now are like alien priestesses. And there's, yes. Yeah. Well, and so there's basically there's three. All of these them. people that are like on the the. The insects, the smaller people, whatever. Yes. These are all like Japanese model and actress and singers. Yes. These are like J-pop singers. Yes. They very much so. But, okay, so, but that's always been the case. Like the original ones, uh, it was a group, I think we were called the Peanuts. And then there was, <laughs> then there was like another group who took over for them in the next bunch of <clears> movies. <throat> but like that seems to be the case. They always have two singers who sing along with whatever. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, um, ooh, hello. Um, so now I love Mothra. I always liked Mothra. Um, when we, when we had that Godzilla video game when I was a kid. Okay. I loved playing as Mothra. <coughs> so, um, but yeah, so <laughs> Mothra, of course, is going to be in the, uh, the new, Movie coming up, um, with in the MonsterVerse movies. Okay, do we know who's directing that, or when that's coming out, or do we know anything about that? Um, yes, we do. No, it's fine. I just didn't know if we did. Yeah, I'll have to breaking check. news. I don't know. Yeah, could can Roland Emmerich be the one directing that? I hope not. <laughs> um, it is. Godzilla King of the Monsters and it is directed by Oh please say Tim Burton. Oh please say Tim Burton. Roland. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's directed by Michael Doherty. Okay, sure. Don't know who that is. Do you? Uh American film director, producer, and screenwriter known for his work with Dan Harris. Uh, on the scripts for Brian Singer's films X2 and Superman Returns. Oh, God. X2 was great. He's Superman also known Returns. for writing and directing the cult horror film Trick or Treat. 
Oh, 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 okay. I'm fine now. Yeah. And oh, so, I think I've known this. Yeah. So this is part of, um, I really I just don't they... like that he was associated with Brian Singer. That's all. No, no, no. I'm sure he doesn't either. Yeah. Um, but so they decided, <laughs> uh, there's like this franchise going on with like Warner Brothers and Legendary Entertainment to make MonsterVerse. You know, like everybody was trying to do their own yeah, series everyone, of films. Yeah, everyone's trying to mock the Marvel thing. Well, and sometimes it works okay. Or like I get the sense it'll be okay. <laughs> I'm actually really hoping this one works out well. Because it's, um, it is... Uh, as long as they have Tom Cruise in it, it should work fine. <laughs> no, that Universal one, what a letdown. They, well, they're, yeah. they're trying to restart that one over and over. And they, I, they always re, retry to start that. I really, I wish that one would have gone well. I was actually looking forward to yeah, it. But. You know. um, so the first in the MonsterVerse series was Godzilla from 2014. Um, and followed by Kong Skull Island in 2017. Okay. I heard was good. So they're saying that these are connected. Yes. Then okay. Uh, And in Kong Skull Island, they show like is that Peter Jackson? I thought that was Peter. No, that's the that's the old King Kong one. Okay, that was no. I'm getting confused. There's so many times that these get reboot. This one, this one had Samuel L. Jackson in it. Oh, okay. The one with recent one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, And then Godzilla King of the Monsters is the one coming out, and then it'll be Godzilla versus Kong, is what's been announced so far. Okay. But Kong Skull Island, there were like pictograms in a cave they saw that looked that shows Mothra. So like oh. they're trying to connect all of that, which it fine by me. Like if you can make that work, if you can make this into a shared universe of these like monster animal thing or these like kaiju's, man, I'm I'm in. Okay, like I'm I'm all for it. So, um, but yeah, so I'm really excited. This is you know I'm I'm when they did the first look. Uh, at the uh, at the Godzilla King of the Monsters, I was super ecstatic because they showed uh, uh, they had Rodan, they had Mothra, they had uh, Gitter, King Ghidorah, like some of these like classic monsters, but they're like these god sized monsters. They're basically they call them Titans in this one, but I think they're supposed to be like protectors or like they. Uh-huh. You know, these, like, earth creatures, and sure. so they, I think, are going to use them to go fight other things. So, so. Uh, should we drop the deuce on this? I think we should. Let's drop the deuce yeah. on Rebirth of Mothra 2. Yeah. Yep, we want to get in here, and we want to give you exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Because we don't want to be phonies. Oh, we don't want to be phonies. So, no, yeah, we we're part of the No Phony Podcast Network. Ew. 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 Uh, so, we are part of the No Phony Podcast Network. Um, no phony podcast network. It's great. It's uh, it's a whole group of people who are coming together, just doing their own thing. We don't have like one central theme. We don't have. Uh, we're not like all sports or all this or all that. Like everybody does their own thing. But it's the the most wonderful part about it is that we all support one another. Um, you know, so uh, we'll go. We'll help each other out. We'll back each other up. Uh, sometimes we'll cross over with other shows and talk on their, um, on, uh, for example, ABC D Bags, which just had its 13 hour episode that it released, uh, had crossover from uh, Loop Dog. Loop Dog. The L O O P. Loop Dog. That's me, Loop Dog. L O O P D O Double G. He, he came on there and talked to them for a while. Um, you know, so everybody kind of supports one another. It's a great thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, we we are a, a team, and and something I loved about it. Sure. So who who's our? Uh, we are we are still the feature podcast. ABC, but go ahead and do the uh, go, uh, go listen to uh, ba- or, uh, ha- other ones. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Saturdays with Chicken Duck. Yes, Saturdays with Chicken. Heroes Duck. Garage. Hero Garage. The Rant with Herman James and friends. Yes. Love the Rant. Yep. Bats and Balls. Uh, B- BS3. Yep, B- BS3. Uh, MC Variety Hour-ish. Yes. With, with my good friend Miles. Yes. Miles and Crawford. I love Miles. Yep. I love Bible-ish. you, Crawford. I love you, Crawford. But yes. I love you, Miles, too. The so go listen to Bible-ish, all those. Bible-ish, The Grave Girls. The Grave got, Girls. The Grave talking, Girls are amazing. Co- talking Cod Swallop. 
Oh yeah. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. With Gemma. Yeah. yeah. So lights in the sky. Dog's best friend. Yeah, we got all sorts of stuff. So please go check them out. Comic books, movies, yeah. poetry, the Bible. Yeah. Punk. Everything you could want. Everything. So go to no phony. Independent no phony of independent awesomeness. Yes. Please go to nophonynetwork.com. Or as Luke Dog says. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get back to birth, rebirth of Mothra too. Yeah. Um, so the uh, it opens with uh, basically it's kind of like um, you, you see, we see in space we see like a swarm of uh, a swarm of Mothras. What well, we think are Mothras, right? We don't yeah, know. They them. look like I mean, little. Mothras. They look like little Mothras. Yeah, and we yeah. don't know the we don't know the perspective. I don't know if they're just well. You were like, by. there are like four hundred Mothras. What are, what's going yeah. on? It was a but that's but they talk about Mothra being a space, you know, entity, and so that's yeah. why I think like I don't know if that. What is he normally? Or what is she? Right? Because Mothra. Well, is okay. She. So I did manage to figure this out. <clears throat> so the original, uh, the original Mothra was always a, a female. Okay. Um, rebirth of Mothra. Was a female, but she sacrifices herself. Uh, she's like dying, and she has laid an egg, and the egg hatches like early because she, on the she, first one, okay. yeah. Because while she's dying and she can't stop the the creature, uh, the new egg hatches, and there's a new Mothra, uh, who they call Mothra Leo. So that's what this one is. Who is a male? Yes, and this one is Mothra Leo. Ah, Jesus, come on, yeah. And so that's what I was like. I bet, oh. I bet this one got paid more too. Probably. Jesus, Mothra Leo. Yeah. Yeah. Mothra. That's oh. also my zodiac sign, by the way. When whenever Mothra dies, <laughs> usually it, it hatches like two eggs. Two eggs. Yeah, and has like crazy twin, two, like twin Mothras. Like twins. Yeah. Yeah. Or twin like larva. So can we just say that George Lucas just ripped off all this? Can we just say that right now? I suppose. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. I just like to say it. that. But uh, so the Mothras fly by, and we we cut to um, you know the the Earth uh, watching a Mothra fly around, and uh, the two uh, the two alien priestesses just sitting there, um, kind of enjoying everything. So they're just uh, they're well, their names, the their names are like Mall and Laura. There's Laura and Maul. Right. Played by uh, Sayaka Yamaguchi and Megumi Kawayashi. They, wow, you were good. I'm yes. not good at names. Ew. So you're uh, good. So uh, they're they're watching everything. Uh, they're called the Elias in Rebirth of Mothra. Okay. That's, I think, they're aliens called the Elias. And while they're there, um, all of a sudden they realize they get this like sense that something bad is happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these like little red starfish start popping up on the water. Uh, and they're talking about, uh, they're talking about the, uh, there's a creature uh, named Degara, uh, Degarla. Yeah. Who. Uh, would send these things out, and Degarla would was Jeff, like Jeff Degarla, Jeff Degarla, Jeff Degarla. What's going on? What's my, going on? My terrible Jeff Garland, <laughs> Jeff Degarla, Jeff Garland. <laughs> it's like a creature that's just screaming. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, Larry, Larry David, what's going on, Larry David? Go ahead. <laughs> so. Uh, Degarla has put these things up now. Uh, Degarla, uh, Degarla's ability or part of the abilities it takes on like DNA from other sea life, and then uses like its strengths to make itself better. So it's like supposedly this like super sea creature basically. Um, and so it sends up these starfish things uh, that uh, that are called barum. And the barum just start taking everything over. So, like, the first one we see crawls up onto the side oh, is of the Is that what boat. they are? I mean, it's just... Yeah, yeah there's okay. a guy, like, fishing. 
Uh, it seemed like these came out of the creature, the the dark yes. one, right? Yeah, like, they do. Um, they, okay. The creature spray, uh, Degarla sprays them out, basically. Okay. Um, so they, they come out and they, one, like, sprays acid in some dude's face. Yes. Uh, and so... Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and then we cut to two guys who are, uh, they are, like, uh... Fishing for they're, they're fishing going for find clams. they're fishing for whatever, but they're fishing in the in, in the most polluted yes. area I've ever seen in my life. Yes, uh, I think they are uh, Masaki and Shimada. Sure, are the two guys? Sure, um, Th- those are yeah. I usually get those like sushi rolls. Oh no no, they're Kohei and Yoji. That's oh, those are my favorite sushi rolls. Yes, Kohei and Yoji. Uh, so Kohei, what's and in Yoji? a Yoji sushi okay. roll? What's in a yoji? Yeah, sushi roll. Uh, it's full of shit. Yes, and the bad acting. <laughs> and bad acting. It's full of ham. <laughs> uh, no, so, so they're kind of our antagonist slash comic relief kind of people. Yeah, they're kind of the henchmen, you would say, or the comic relief henchmen. Oh, maybe, I don't know if they are or not. I don't know if that's the character's name. So those might be the kids. I think okay. the kids. They might be the kids. Whatever. But we have the yeah. we have two guys who are uh basically who are these fishermen who are kind of our lazy antagonists trying to get all those, you know, free stuff. Right. Um while they're fishing, something jumps out of the water and like hits them and then bounces away. Right. Uh, and just flies off, but yeah. when it does that, it leaves like a gold ring behind. Yeah, it shoot it, like it shits out a gold ring. Yes, which I'm like, why? I don't think it shit it out. It was on its tail. Was it? Yeah, they were on its tail. Okay, we, we showed that a lot at the beginning, but yeah. then it, they stopped after a while. Do you while. remember? Okay, like Punky Brewster. Remember that cartoon? Didn't Punky Glomer? Brewster? Yeah, Glomer. Yeah, Glomer. Yeah, Glomer. Yeah. It kind of looked like a Glomer, only without the color. Um, More the beard. It looked like if you just attached Glomer's feet to Glomer's head. Um, it looked like if a fry guy like coughed something up. Yes. Right. If if like they were like, can you make me a fry guy, but make it out of hair yeah. instead? Can you? Yeah. Can you drop that fry guy on the ground and get all the hair in it <laughs> from a McDonald's like <laughs> like like fast food? Floor, yeah, sure. Congratulations. Here's your new, you know, character. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me see. Well, he shits. Okay. Old. If McDonald's has onion rings, I propose <laughs> it's, it's the onion that, rings. That does this McDonald's have onion rings? I don't think they no, do. God. No, they don't. But if they do get ever that. get onion rings, I propose that there's the fry guys. Yes. And then there's this guy <laughs> this with guy. the gold rings on his tail. Yes. And the fry guys will be like, I don't want to hang out with him. And, and Ronald McCumber yeah. will be like, it's your job. And they'll be like, I, I don't want to. He's this weird. is so weird. This is bizarre. And actually, I turn to you. I go, are we watching Japanese gremlins? Are we? Yeah. Yes. As if we are. Thank the answer, you. The answer Thank is you. correct. Yes, we are. Um, I've always wanted to watch Japanese gremlins. So after those things take off, we cut to a school, I think. <laughs> I don't even know. I was like, pretty sure it was after school. I don't know what it is. School yeah. or something. Well, okay. So be. we see kids. Uh, there are these two punk boys. They're playing with caterpillars. Yeah. And uh, the one kid goes to put it on uh, our heroine's hair, yeah. uh, Shiori. Um, and she turns around and sees it smacks it it flies through the air into the nerdy kid's mouth he chokes and then spits it out and all this is just we're Seamless. talking it's it's awkward cg oh it's and very so, awkward and it's like weird combinations between cg and green screen yeah, stuff kind of in a it's way. very awkward which is a lot of this movie which is fine i mean like it, it is what it is yeah. like it is cheesy we love it you, you know, know? Uh, you it, love it i love it it flew through the air and into the teacher's, I think it was supposed to go into cleavage. Cleavage? cleavage? Yes. Yeah. But I don't know. I I didn't think there was much room for that. But, you know, the, the, the things 
flew into her blouse. I mean, it looked like that blouse was pretty tight on her. It did. I don't think that that thing is just easily fly in there. Maybe, maybe it was a flatworm. I <laughs> yeah. don't know anything about cleavage, so I wouldn't, you know, know much. No. So. Uh, but she then screams. Um, then the kids are in trouble. We see, like, the the PE teacher, I guess. I guess. I don't who know. is, like... Uh, he's scolding like, these kids. Scolding the kids. And uh, Shiori even is like, they call you names. Yeah. So that he can be like even more mad at them. Yeah. Um, and as they're. Which way to be kind of like rub salt in the wound. Yeah. You know, like, it's one thing to like tattle. Yeah. Come did on. Did he need to know that, Shiori? I don't I'm think sure he, did. he did. No. It's bad enough he is a Japanese PE teacher, yeah. right? I'm going to assume that's the kind of, you know the highest teacher you can be in Japan, right? Yeah. Right? Do yeah, you I think? think so? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um uh so the <laughs> so uh all of a sudden everything starts shaking. Yes. Uh and I'm trying to remember was that uh I don't have what, what are you trying here? to remember? Yeah, it was. Uh, Why was the... it shaking? Yeah. It was just shaking because it was a really loose plot in uh, this movie. Well, all the barons start coming up. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember if, like, DeGarla's. De... No, DeGarla doesn't come up yet. He doesn't come up quite yet. No. Um, he's in the process. I think he's yes. in the process of kind of coming out of yeah, what, a, digging what his other way coma out. he was in. <laughs> digging his way out. Um, yeah. So, obviously, there's trouble uh, afoot. So, uh, the children, basically everybody goes home. Uh, she goes to, uh, Shuri goes home. Those guys are there. The two fishermen guys yeah. are there. And, uh, they're saying, Hey, we saw this creature. Yeah. We got gold from it. We're going to hunt it down and, and figure out what it is. And, you know, we're going to be rich. And so they take off. Uh, Shiori, uh, her mom is like, Hey, Go get me some flowers. So she goes out to go get flowers. That's your job. Go get flowers. Yeah. So she goes and gets flowers. Well, they run like a touristy place. Oh, okay. And and the name of it is even written in English. So it's it's obviously yeah. like... Yeah, what was the name of it? I don't remember. I can't remember, but it was... Uh, it was like... Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. I think it was, was. Bar Nun Dude Ranch. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but no, she... So I get why she's going to get flowers. You got to go dress it up. So mm-hmm. she's in the woods looking for flowers. And she's picking these. And while she's doing that, she sees this, this weird little like little tentacle thing. Yeah. That's kind of moving around. She couldn't, couldn't figure out what it was. Mm-hmm. And it's the little creature. Right. And then I said, Jeremy, are we watching Japanese Mac and me? The answer oh, is the yes. best. The answer is yes. Um, so... <laughs> so uh, she puts him in the basket, and uh, the kids come up. the uh, The two boys, the two boys, the her. two rascals, yeah, troublemaking who, boys who are picking on her because she ratted them out. Who have a hidden desire of uh, of like uh, hiding raft gear. Oh probably. yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they they yeah. have a hidden raft they they go to. I don't know why they're so secretive about yeah. this raft. It was like under like something and under something don't else. Don't tell was, anyone. They we'll finally get made pump fun it up for this raft. And so they're going along the water, and then one of those starfish just rips yeah. it for no reason. It rips it for no reason, and so they end up going back to shore. Right. I thought that was weird. Yeah. Um. But they they see her. They start picking on her. Yeah. And then they realize she's got the creature. So she starts running with it. Yeah. And trying to get away from him. So it's going on. Now, uh, so this is where things totally fly off the handle. <laughs> All of a sudden, a little uh, <laughs> little witch-looking lady. Yes. Who looks like a dark version of those fairies. Yes. Uh, or the, the alien priestesses. Right. Uh, the mini priestesses. Flies in on like a dragon yeah. puppy thing. Yes. And. Uh, dragon like puppy thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, let me the uh, the other alien priests. So Laura and Maul uh, fly on a 
like a mini Mothra. A thing. mini Mothra. Yeah. Yeah. And she flies on the little yeah. dragon thing. Yes, the little is, dragon thing. And then I turn to you. Remember, I turn to you and go, Jeremy, are we watching the Japanese witchy poo? If so, awesome. <laughs> yeah, but this is Belvera. Yes, Belvera. The, the yes. E- she's the evil alien yeah. priest. She's their sister, but she's oh. the evil one. That's what Japanese Sally Fields ha- eats. She she has Belneva. Bel- <laughs> Belneva? Belneva. Uh, so... Belvara starts chasing after them and like blasting at them, trying to get the creature who uh, she says is called Gorgo. Yeah, Gorgo. Yes. Richard Gorgo, as I called it. Yeah. She needs him to, uh, she needs him because he'll show the way to the, uh, the lost castle or the lost treasure of uh, Nirai Kanai. Yeah. Which is supposed to be like an island legend. Yeah. And so she's chasing him and blasting him. And obviously the uh, the other two kids, like, I'm glad they didn't make the boys, like, bad guys. I'm glad they didn't either. They That's what the two, you know, guys looking for the creature yeah. are for. Yes. But so you the, forgot my favorite part. Once they reached the back at the, uh, wherever they were supposed to be, like, the resort. Well, they're, they're tossing this thing around. Oh, they're tossing like the thing ball. around. You haven't reached that, that part because i got to talk about my favorite for, well, scene. It goes on forever. They're, oh, forever. She's flying after them, blasting at them. But then uh, Laura and Maul fly in and the, she's, they're blasting at mm. Belvara and, or Belvera and it's just like this big scene. Yeah. I think you were like, you were like, is this Endor? Yeah. Are we like, in Endor? This, are we in Japanese Endor? Japanese Endor? If we are amazing. <laughs> And so then finally, like, uh, the the one kid catches it, catches uh, right. Gorgo. Yes. And is this what your favorite this is part where, Yes. Like a cigarette falls? Oh, no. That that happened earlier. Did that? Well, can yeah. we go back to that? Yes, like a cigarette can. falls out of nowhere because I don't know who's smoking. It was one of those two guys. Oh, it was one of those two yeah. guys? And then a cat. Meow. Well, if, if the cigarette it falls off cat? the edge... And it shows and that it lands quick, by the, the worst cat. Cut, the worst cut ever. And then it goes back to, you know, the action. Yeah. They have this cat, like, on the blue screen going through the air with a smoking tail. I don't know what the hell that was. Yeah. Why have that? It was like, it was like the person who, who wrote this was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've written anime before. So this <laughs> will be perfect. This will be perfect. Uh, so, the, but this is where, <laughs> this is where the kid, he's running and Belvara like blasts behind him and hits the ground. Yeah, and he jumps and is like flying, but he lands oh, that like one. Yeah, 300 that yards from so the like, woods. Yeah, when you okay, the kid, the 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 one kid that, who was wearing the Oakland Athletics t shirt. Yeah, in this movie, like they he gets zapped by her right, flies completely out of the forest area onto this like. Shore area where it's like over the resorty area, yeah. And like you look back, like the the camera like zooms back, and you're like, "How far did you go?" Yeah, and he lands face first, way too far for a kid. And it was weird. Like I didn't get like he's face first in the sand. Yeah, they get him up, and they're like, "Are you okay?" And he waits for like a couple minutes, and then goes. (gasps) Like he's like he was like, "What is that?" Like he was just. I almost died. Thank you. Yeah, they, you should have, like, woken up and made that sound. Instead, you were just like, I'm okay, and then just gasp for no reason. Like, I almost died by saving a Gorgo. Oh, Gorgo. How I spent my summer vacation. <laughs> so, uh, so they end up meeting with the, uh, with Laura and Maul, uh, the, the, Eli- the good Elias sisters, who... Uh, tell them all about uh, Degarla and how they need Gorgo to find this treasure because it's the only weakness of Degarla. Yeah. So they have to go do this. Um, the uh, apparently Degarla was actually created by the Nirai Kanai like civilization. It was supposed to be a way to like destroy pollution. But something was wrong with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Has pollution management gone wrong? Uh, the only thing that can stop it now is Mothra Leo. 
um, but it needs help from uh, Nirai Kanai itself, so they have to go there. Now, do you think Mothra Leo is related to Melissa? Melissa Leo? <laughs> yes. They both look the same. He was... As, isn't that her name now as she's gotten older? She turned into <laughs> Mothra Leo. Mo- Mothra. Oh, I'm Melissa sorry, Mothra Mothball Leo. Mothball Leo. Oh, that's, yes, that's a good one. Uh, Mothball so, Leo. Oh, moth, old Mothball oh, Leo. Oh, old Mothball Leo. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, I loved you in Frozen River, Mothball Leo. <laughs> so now as Laura and Maul are telling like this, this story about like hope and like, hey, you know, Mothra Leo can save us and we can stop this evil creature. On the other side of this is Belvera telling those two fishermen who are, she see, catches them in the woods looking for Gorgo. Uh, and she stops them and explains to them that they can have this treasure if they can find that city, which means you have to find the kids and go after them. Uh, and so she's kind of corrupting them to go do this stuff. So she's got her team. Uh, Laura and Maul have theirs. Uh, so they make their way uh, to where the castle is hidden under the water uh, in a boat. Now, I love that one of them is wearing like a uh, like a Coca Cola, yeah, like t-shirt. A, yeah, that, yeah. Who did wardrobe for this movie? Jose Canseco. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Brought to you by <laughs> Americana. <laughs> But no, but they're, as they're going, they're talking about uh, DeGarlo was basically DeGarlo was awakened by the pollution levels in the water. Yeah. Remember, even like the. the guy oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that makes so sense. polluted. That's why it's, it's like. a nice he, little why, allegory. I mean, it's yeah. whatever for, for what it is. Yeah, that's why DeGarlo. And, that, and remember, comes and you said that to me, and I turned to you and said, Are we watching Japanese Captain Planet? If so, amazing. <laughs> but he keeps releasing the barum into the sea. To take all that the stuff out, but unfortunately, it takes out everything. Not just pollution, it takes out animals and it takes out people and anything else that's in the water. And creates this, like, giant red tide of these things. Yes. Uh, yes. And, also, like, some of them are, like, pods. Kind of like tide pods. Yeah. And you can put them in your mouth and yeah. make sure you don't they don't break it's, in your mouth. It creates a crimson tide. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Hackman washes Gene Hackman right up on the shore. Denzel Washington. <laughs> Do they send Mothra out or not? I don't know. It just ended. The movie just ended. I don't know. Oh, no, it didn't just end. No, did it? I wish that's how Crimson Tide ended. Yeah, right. I wish that like we yes. never knew. We never knew who was right. Yeah, because that was me not too important to the story. Yeah. I just didn't want to know, but we did. Unfortunately, of course, it's Denzel. Yeah. Um. So. Anyway, uh, so they head to the castle, or where the castle is, and we have, uh, they they finally see the, like, the ruins under the water, and Gorgo dives in, and once he gets inside, a light shoots out of the water, and it raises up, and this is huge, like, this giant pyramid with all these, like, yes, uh, with all these, like, um, yeah. Like snake mountain, kind mm-hmm. of like snake things on it, or like creatures. It's kind of like it looks like. How would I describe it? It's like the lost city of uh, Sanford from Sanford and Son. Because when yeah. he like a junkyard kind of guy. Because <laughs> basically, this thing. Because like, if that's the like protecting it from like pollution, isn't this just kind of like this city that that uh, yeah this lost city that you know yeah it was supposed was, was to be built advanced. on a junkyard, yeah. an ocean junkyard. Yes, in a way. That's, that's what it is. Um, it's exactly what it is. And then I turn to you, is this Japanese San- Sanford and Son? If so, that's terrible. <laughs> but no, it's uh, so it looks like an Aztec temple, basically. Yeah. It raises it up. It looks like an Aztec temple. The kids go inside. I think when you, you went inside, you were like, you were like, Legends of the Hidden Temple. It does. It, lo- it was, looked like Legends of the Hidden Temple inside. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but the, the two fishermen have actually seen the light shoot up so they were heading that direction so they're yeah. not far behind um but no one else did no one gives a shit on this island yeah so now Degarla basically starts going on a rampage i think at one point like Degarla kind of attacked the land a little yeah. bit yeah that's uh, the only time like anyone else 
gave a shit is when yeah. when the the monster started attacking. And Ireland. it was real brief. Real for the, brief. For the most part, Degarla stayed out at sea. It was almost like it didn't really need to. I don't know. It just yeah. it was kind of real. It was too brief. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either like it, either put it put more land battles, or yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. It just didn't make sense. Well, Degarla kind of. I think it was. I think they kept it out at sea because Degarla is kind of a tough costume to move around in. Probably just didn't work so didn't well. Didn't you say it looked like uh, they just put a dog in a costume and said, go, yeah. go and crazy? Said, go do it. Go. Yeah. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. Come here. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm in my dragon costume. <laughs> um, <laughs> look at me. I'm in my dragon costume. <laughs> and Degarla, it, Degarla does look like, it looks like some sort of like a dragon uh, with little squatty legs. No. And yes. it has like wings, kind of? Kind Honestly, of. Kind of. Like, it's almost like a flying fish yeah. looking wings. Yeah. Where they're not real wings, but they're... Right. It looks like Pete Davidson's dragon. Let's just call it that. <laughs> Let's call it what it is. Um, so, <clears throat> so now, uh, DeGarla's freaking out. Uh, they're, 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 the kids are trying to go find this treasure. They're moving their way through. The fishermen are climbing up. They're almost there. Um, so now they... Uh, Basically, at this point, Laura and Maul are like, we have to stop him. Like, we, we got to stop uh, Tagarla. And so they go, and they call, they start doing their song. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you calls, you told me that's how you call Mothra. Yeah. Is you sing a song. Yeah. Well, and they usually, uh, like, the little, um, <clears throat> they're little, like, the little fairy uh, gals usually What'd you have, call me? You heard me. They usually sing to make certain things happen or like they yeah. have certain songs but like um they always do a lot of times they would do things in unison yeah um you know and, and do stuff like that and so this one is it, so is there always two of them yeah okay originally the original script called for four but they were like that's ridiculous let's just do two that's not a joke that was it was real they cut it back to two um and so they go off, they sing, and they call Mothra. And so you see all these little Mothras come together to form one big Mothra. I thought it was a pretty cool shot. I thought that was a pretty cool scene of, of Mothra forming up. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it reminded me I, of like a like a Power Rangers or... It, well, remember, or I even, I even said thing. that to you. I go, Jeremy, are we watching the Japanese version of Power Rangers? And then I was like, that's it, an actual if thing. If so, that's actually Power Rangers. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so no, yeah, I, no, that was cool. But then once we saw Mothra, kind yeah. of not so cool. Well, so it starts flying and it's just sparkling everywhere. Yeah, it just sparkles everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. <clears throat> but it, it takes off and starts heading towards the Carla. So while they are running around through this castle, Mothra and Degarla are fighting. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of fighting with this, too. I mean, um, so, like, <coughs> excuse me, Degarla has, like, shoulder cannons. Yeah. That it fires. Uh, Degarla has these, like, blasts. This thing will not back. knock down. And it actually has a cool, like, when it, when it fires the blast out of its mouth, I like that kind of effect. Like, you get it in some shows where... Instead of it being a bright beam with like whatever lightning on it, it's like black, but it has like purple lightning around it too. So it almost looks like it's just shooting darkness yeah. out. Yeah. Um, which, uh, in comparison, uh, Mothra Leo uh, has like electric blasts and, and things that's shooting out of its wings and out of its like. And a head? And it, it, the one I like is it shoots these like, it has these three little spots on its head. Yeah. That it shoots these like rainbow thin lasers yeah. from, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I think is really cool. So it, they're holding, they're both yeah. holding their own. I'm building my costume for Pride this year. I a Mothra costume? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Gay Mothra, I would be down for. That. Well, I'm just saying. There you go. Yeah. And Gearzilla, it's just Godzilla <laughs> wearing with um, leather, with leather all over it. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Hey, uh, <laughs> I like you. Oh. Um, <coughs> so anyway, but the uh, and oh, and fuck at one point, uh, 
Degarla shoots up out of the water, like swims up, flies out of the water, and grabs Mothra out of midair. Like and bites sl- the wing. And slams it into the ground and is biting the wing. And whoever did it, like kudos, they put sound effect to that. Like you can hear it squish and like bite into the wing. I was like, oh shit, Mothra, no. Like I was, you you can attest to it. I was like, oh my God, no, Mothra. You were crying. I wasn't crying. You, you were crying. You were crying. When you were, I, I turned to you and go, is this the Japanese terms of endearment? If so, awesome. <laughs> I cried at neither terms of endearment. Really? Nor Mothra. Mm. Get my daughter the medicine. <laughs> Get my daughter the drugs. All right, go ahead. Uh, so they, uh, so they continue to fight outside, and they're both kind of like one goes down, the other one, you know, it's like back and uh, forth. Yeah, just like pride. Yeah. <laughs> So they get inside. The kids are like running around, and this is trying just to find a lot like of, the treasure. Of yeah, the, yeah, this is a lot of like, what the hell's going on? But remember, they kept coming to the edge. Like when they wanted to see the action, so they kept coming to the edge. Yeah. These kids have the worst depth perception when it comes to like, oh, whoa, we almost yeah. fell. They get to the edge and they're like, whoa, whoa. 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 And then uh, at one point, uh, do you not know that you're on like like <laughs> this, see an open this door and temple like, thing? Yeah. So at just one point, watch where you're going. <laughs> at one point, she or especially after the first time, you think you would expect. Right. Maybe I should be careful. You but should they, be careful anyway. Aren't. You've never been on this thing ever. So she and it's been under the water for right. millions of years or whatever. Uh, so you're probably so, going to be slipping and sliding a little bit. <laughs> so Shiori gets captured by the fishermen, uh, and so they have her and they have Gorgo. And they're running towards, like, wherever the treasure room is. Yeah. Making their way that way. Uh, so the boys are chasing, trying to figure out how to get to them. Uh, at one point, the nerdy kid, like, trips and falls off the ledge. And we were like, uh-oh, okay. He's gone. He's gone. But we see him we just killed that sliding kid. towards, like, the other door. Yeah, so it's kind of like... Um, and it was, the last it was like crusade. a walkway. Like like a Last Crusade? Yeah, like Indiana Jones' The Last yeah. Crusade. And uh, we, were, we were just like, okay. And then the, the second kid rolls down it, too. Yeah. I don't know. How, what Like, there was gravity on, on that thing all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Where it's just like, oh, yeah, I it doesn't look like it was steep enough for him to slide. No, but whatever. But why? But a lot of this, you know. Yeah. Uh, so they get into a throne room where uh, the fishermen uh, are going to go get these jewels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of them gets one. Belvara gets the other. Right. And one was a stone that everyone was romancing, and the other one was a jewel from the Nile. Am I, am I making that, that is up? correct. Yes. Okay, uh, so so they get those, uh, and they're trying. I to think go it was like when they one. grabbed them. I'm like, this has all been about a, a Fabergé egg. Yes, a exactly. Shelley Fabergé <laughs> egg. That's true. Ugh. Uh, I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was from the uh, the stone from Indiana Jones. Indiana and Temple Jones. of Doom. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so while that's all happening, outside, uh, Mothra's been blasting Degarla under the water for like you know an hour and uh finally uh DeGarla manages to blast Mothra grab it and essentially pull it into the water or like blast it through the, the temple pull it into the water and when it's under the water Mothra does not do well under the water uh while it's down there uh, a lot of those barum, those little red starfish, just coat it. It oh no, that's what it was. Uh, it starts spinning around. That's how it falls. It starts spinning around underwater. Degarla does, and makes this like tornado of those barum, and they just coat Mothra. So Mothra's life is just slowly draining. Um. So. Uh, in the throne room, this, like, priestess shows up uh, who says that she is from, uh, she's a princess of Nira Kanai. That's what it is. Uh, and so the princess 
starts blasting. She blasts one of the fishermen and knocks him out. Uh, she tells, uh, like the, the the Laura and Maul are telling her, people are good. You should save people. They're you know they're they're good at heart. And uh, Delvar or Belvar is like, no, they're not. They're terrible. They polluted the earth again. You know, all this stuff is happening. She's trying to talk to him. Uh, the princess basically says, they're, I believe that they're good. Uh, and so she's like, the earth must be protected and saved. You know, these children that are here are the hope for future generations. Yeah. And then reveals that the actual lost treasure, it's not these gems. Those are just the power sources for, like, the cannons. Uh, the real treasure is Gorgo. <gasps> it's been there the whole time. Yeah, and only Gorgo can decide if it wants to save everything. It must save Fantasia. <laughs> yeah. And you so, had it in you all along, Bastion. <laughs> save my name, Bastion. Save my name, Bastion. Gorgo. <laughs> Math. Moon child. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> so Jesus. <laughs> Moon child. <laughs> Jesus. That was weird. Are, go ahead. For years, I didn't know what Bastion yeah. was saying, and I was it's, like, "It's Moon child, right?" Yeah, it is that? Moon child. Yeah, I didn't know what it was, yeah. it, but it when was, I finally but, yeah. figured out, figured out, I'm like, "What a freaking letdown!" He was a. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like he was a phoenix. It was like Moon child phoenix. It was like River Phoenix. And, yeah. No. Moonchild, moon unit, Zappa. <laughs> yeah, it's Zappa or Phoenix. Or, yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, but uh, they're like, you have to, you have to go get Gorgo yeah. to Mothra because Mothra needs him now uh, and you have to stop him. So they're all trying to get out of there. Um, and like... Uh, you know they're running, they're going. the The one fisherman kind of snaps out of it. the The goofier of the two snaps out uh, as the place is caving in, and they're like, "Because uh, the kids save him," and then they're like, "Well, what about their friend?" And they can't get to him, so they have to leave him behind. So they keep running. Uh, they get to a point where everybody leaps across this chasm. It gets to where there's actual danger. They leap across this chasm, <laughs> and. Uh, the one kid, the uh, the bigger the kid, Oakland is like, A's, I, yeah. I can't jump. Like, I can't do this. I won't make it. So behind him, and actually it was a pretty cool shot, like out of the shadows, the other guy kind of emerges. Actually, yeah, you're right on that. Yeah. yeah, he kind of emerges out, and he was like, you left me behind? He's like, how could you? And you think he's going to do something. He grabs the kid, and they're like, yeah. please don't. He picks the kid up, and he goes, catch him. <clears throat> and throws him across yeah. the way. And so you're like, oh, my God, in his final moments, he was good again. Right. You're like, well, hey, you're fine by me. Yeah. Thank God you're and dying. S- so then above him, a piece of the ceiling is falling. Yeah. And you're like, oh, here it goes. Here so it goes. It's coming right for him. But it lands behind him. Yeah. And catapults him up over the chasm yes. to the other side. It cuts off his legs or something? No. It well, I thought it leg. cut off his legs. It no. looked like it did. Did we mention that the one kid at the beginning <laughs> hurt himself during the, the oh, raft? we did not. At the beginning. And the reason why I'm saying this now is because what happens yeah, okay. uh, in this scene. So, so earlier, the athletic kid's a uh, guy. The, 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 the one kid hurt himself. Uh, from he, flying out of the woods. Flying out of the woods. And so Gorgo, in order to um, heal his wound, he pees on him. Oh, yeah. She's holding Gorgo. He just Donald pees Trump. On him. Yeah. yeah, just golden shower, like pees yeah. on him. And they're like, "Ooh, it's peeing oh, on it's me." Peeing. But then it heals him. Yeah, it just heals him. Yeah. So now the guy who, the fisherman who flies across the chasm, yeah. he's just messed up, laying on the yeah. ground. And they're like, "Is he okay? We need to do something." And then, and then, so Shiori, then Gorgo, <clears throat> Shiori, looks at the other kids and nods her head like, "I know what to do." <laughs> and so it's just like. First Gorgo must can't. pee on him. It's a first person shot from yeah. the guy who's on the ground. And you see her hold Gorgo over him and just pee come down over the camera. Uh, and then he's healed and ready to go. So he's running what full speed. The fuck? Yes. Uh, and I said, is this the Japanese pee pee tape? If so, gross. <laughs> 
more interested in the Russian <laughs> PP tape. Anyway, but the uh, so <clears throat> they finally make it out, or they're almost making it out. Things start blowing up and falling apart in right. the temple, and fire is just coming up behind them. And it looks like they're about to get roasted, and all of a sudden, a door there's a blast, and this door falls down and protects them. And they were like, What the hell happened? And they turn and look, uh, and it was Belvara. She blasted that and saved all of them. And the Laura and Maul are like, Belvara? And she just kind of looks at them and smiles and flies away. So that's where I think we're done with Belvara at that point, pretty much. Um, so outside, they bring Gorgo to, uh, to Mothra, who's barely hanging on. And Mothra just heals up. I think uh, before, Laura and Maul were trying to blast all these little starfishies off of it. Yeah. Yes. But it was not working. It was not working. No. There's too many of them. Yeah. So Mothra's almost out of life. Gorgo saves him. Uh, And he's full power again. Starts just kicking Belvar or kicking uh, uh, Degarla's ass. It kind of like upgrades in a way. Yeah, like his well, wings get a little bit brighter. Yeah, they're more like rainbowy and like rainbow-y. Have designs on them. Yeah, um, like he's he's upgraded. We've he's seen more some powerful. kites. Like when we go kite flying, we see kites that have like wings of yeah. like things of whatever they are, like yes. butterflies, whatever. It kind of looks like that, where it's all like colorful rainbow kind yeah. of thing. I think I think you should you get a I mean? Mothra kite. I want a Mothra. I will get kite. a Degarla kite. Yes, and, and we'll, we'll just fly fight. them. We'll try each to other. kite. We'll kite. You know, fight each battle. Other. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Mothra is kicking Degarla's butt. Uh, Degarla falls down into the water. And so Mothra is like, I think Mothra figures out it can't really defeat him by, uh, because like at this point, Mothra actually turns into Rainbow Mothra. <laughs> That, that's what it is. They call it Rainbow Mothra, so uh, which is one of its forms. So Rainbow Mothra then transforms, like it, it flies in the air and it shapeshifts, and we were like, what? Into like this pointy-faced Mothra. It almost looks like a, a wasp or something like that. It's got this pointy face. It's got like four wings now. And like a almost like a fish tail. It's, it looks like a, a cross between a swordfish and a butterfly. And it dives into the water. So now we have Aqua Mothra. This is Mothra's water form. Yeah, it looks weird. And they say at some point they're like, "That's because Gorgo yeah. was the water spirit." Water spirit. And we were like, oh, okay, "Okay, sure." That was. That was awfully tacked on, but yeah. sure. So he starts fighting. Yeah, so he's, underwater. he's going fast underwater, kicking Degarlo's butt. Yeah, and I was like, Degarlo is is trying to to kill the uh, the spokes logo of Bonefish Grill. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Neil Patrick like, Harris is, <laughs> no Patrick. is over there. Ooh, that hit him harder than Bang Bang Shrimp <laughs> hit my stomach. Ha. Uh, so. Aquamothra is cool actually shooting these like X's at these like X shaped yes. blasts at him yes. and finally shoots one big one and it hits him. Phrasing. And then, Phrasing. <laughs> uh, and so it's all over him. No, the uh <laughs> Well, so then Mothra comes inside of him. The, the, kind uh, of. Yeah, well he does. Yeah. He actually Mothra He starts, shoves that gay agenda down his throat. <laughs> you know, he does. His rainbow, rainbow <laughs> Mothra is right down his throat. No, the uh, Aqua Mothra is going right towards him. He actually breaks into a bunch of little Mothras, Aqua Mothras, flies down his gullet and is shooting Barum from inside of him. Yeah. And from outside, because he, I think he realized that you, you're not going to defeat Degarla from the outside, that he's most vulnerable inside. So when they go and... Aren't we all? <laughs> So when they go inside, they're blasting him. You see him start like, you see like flashes of yeah. light like on his body, and you see like smoke start coming out of his mouth. And so he's getting torn up from the inside out. And finally, the uh, Aquamothra leaves or get, goes out of his mouth, 
And you see DeGarlo just fall dead, like, on the ground, pretty much. Uh, so then, uh, basically, uh, at this point, Mothra, like, heads up, and he's using this, like, uh, he's using this, like, energy to pull DeGarla out of the water. So he's got his body held midair, and then he changes back to, or to Rainbow Mothra. He's got his body held midair, uh, and then he, uh, the temple starts, like, has this light going, too. He takes DeGarla over the temple, drops him on it, and it just starts exploding. Now, at some point, too, I don't remember when he does it, but, like, Mothra flies and makes, like, a, uh makes like a walkway across the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Like like the Red Sea. Like he basically parts the Red Sea for them. Sure. And so but they're they're trying to run across it. Moses Mothra? Yeah. yeah. Uh but they're just st- staring and watching all of this and I'm like, "Go." Go. <laughs> so, go. So they're hanging out. Um uh, Degarla's body falls on the temple. It explodes. The temple collapses. Degarla is self-destructing. Uh, Maul and Laura fly to safety. Uh, Belvara, you know, flies out of there. And then uh, the temple turns into like it looks like it starts turning into like energy, and then turns into water. Uh, Mothra then flies through it. And it just all goes, turns into water. So it yeah. just, it's all destroyed then. Uh, and so Mothra has saved the day again. Yay. And then the water starts to collapse on them. Yeah. On the and kids. then they start running. They, we made so it. So they all start running. And they run an awfully long way mm, in like a couple, like yeah. before the water comes in on them. Yeah. Uh, but they, at the end, they're all safe. Uh, Shiori misses yeah. uh, Gorgo. And they're like, well, just look at Mothra's wing. And I'm like, oh, is Gorgo going to be in the shape or something? Yeah, I was like, what? No, no reason. Yeah. Just look at the wing. Just look at the wing. Why? Yeah. Why? Because I thought that was weird, too. I was like, Mothra. Is, just enjoy Mothra. Is, God. Is Gorgo going to be like, wink, wink. I'm just I'm on the wing. Mothra. A wink. Look at me. I thought that was weird, too. I was like, what? And like a little, it's like Mothra's got a little toupee. Just enjoy Mothra because he's the one that really did all the yeah, work. Now, I say he? look at the wing because he's fucking Mothra. When he didn't do anything again? without Gorgo, no. right? He couldn't he was, do it without Gorgo. He was holding Gorgo. his own for a while. Yeah, but for a while. But he couldn't really, you know, if it wasn't for Gorgo. No, he didn't do those other powers. If it wasn't was was was, was for Fry Guy, yeah. Gorgo. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they're all on the beach or whatever. Yeah, and she's then, holding something. Yeah, she's holding. She keeps looking at her hands. And we're like, "What are you doing?" Well, at the end, she has a little pearl that uh, Gorgo. She's like, "Gorgo gave it to me," or shit it out of yeah. His, I, that's what I was whatever. like. When did Gorgo give that? to Yeah, you? when did Gorgo give you this? Uh, but it he was too busy me, trying to save the world. We were making the jokes about the never-ending story. Yeah, and then she had the last little pearl thing and I'm like oh my god it is the never yeah, ending story yeah it is the last drop of Fantasia the Japanese never ending story the last story. grain of Fantasia <laughs> um, but no she uh, so she has this pearl and then she's looking at it with everybody and it turns into earth yes the end the end what? you've been you've been deuced <laughs> <laughs> the rebirth of Mothra 2 Oh, so that's what uh, we thought. Of it. Let's hear what other people thought of it, shall we? Let's. Let us do that. This person gave it a 9 out of 10. They are called DJ Zilla, which, by the way, is a great name for a DJ. That's a great name. I'm DJ Zilla. Ah, I'm here to conquer you. Although some kaiju fans consider a majority of this film a joke, I do not. What you have here is a great little film made on a small budget. That not only entertains, but also keeps the same series going in the same direction as the first of the trilogy, the uh, the first one. Yeah, that's a little nice review. Yeah, uh, this person gives it a five out of ten. They are JJS O two six six. More Mothra, bordering on ridiculous. First, I love the majority of of uh, these films. 
all the silly Godzilla flicks from the 70s and so on, but this film is taking it to a new level. Granted, I give it a 5 out of 10, but what's the deal with Mothra and all the powers he has now? Aqua Mothra? Give me a break. Both creatures are too, uh, too many different weapons that weren't explained, nor seem to be dominant in battle. The effects were good, better than most films of their type, but I would have liked to see more of a land-based battles because of the moth uh, in water doesn't cut it for me. After seeing the rebirth of Mothra, this was kind of a letdown and a little boring at the end. Hopefully, Rebirth 3 is better. Well, okay. hopefully. Yeah. I don't know. But, yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's... Uh, and I did edit- editorialize by giving them an angry voice. I, I noticed that. Yes. <laughs> um, well, because I just don't think... Like, like, when you're doing that, I mean, come on. Yeah. Go well, along for gotta, the ride a little bit. I think bit. you got to think about it a little bit, though, too, because, like, very clearly this is... Now, I've always liked Mothra, um, but I almost look at, like, these, this Mothra movie seems as more like a... Um, let me put it in a really kind of geeky term. So, like, there's Doctor Who, who's kind of... An, Who? Yes. Mm-hmm. Who's kind of this all ages, but, you know, maybe not real kitty kind of thing. Uh, kind of. And then, then you had Torchwood, which was more adult. Adult. Yeah, and then you had the Sarah Jane Sarah Chronicles, Jane was more, more kitty. kitty. Yeah. To me, this version of Mothra, this rebirth of Mothra, is the Sarah Jane Chronicles. Sort of. Where it had this kitty element to it. Minus whereas, canine, but yeah. Yeah, whereas, the, whereas Godzilla, to me, would be more of like your all ages kind of thing. Yeah, the Doctor you, Who. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so the Torchwood would it, be... Um, Correct. Well, you know. Who knows? Is what it is. Yeah. So, um, Ichi the Killer. <laughs> the, uh, uh, King so, Kong. King Kong, because King Kong never dies. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about our five questions. Sure. Uh, what was your favorite part? Well, um, unlike you, I didn't... I mean, yeah, I guess the special effects are better than some of these movies, right? But a lot of it was kind of cheesy. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not meant to be. What I did enjoy about this movie is um, it was fun. Like, it was fun. It had a fun attitude yeah. towards it, right? Yeah. It didn't quite take itself so serious. Yes. But when it did, I even enjoyed that. I kind of enjoyed the mythology that they were bringing up a little bit of it. Yes. So I guess that's my favorite part is like, you know, they kind of built more of a mythology of like, hey, here's this and this and this. When they were de- describing the island and, and, you know, what the, uh, you know, happened uh, way back in the day. I kind of enjoyed that a little bit. Yeah. I thought, okay, cool. I'm on. I'm on. Yeah. I'm on board, I guess. Yeah. I think the thing that's not the greatest works... movie, but it's not the worst. No, no, not at all. No, I think the thing that always works for me with Mothra is the the protector nature of it. Yeah. And like that still to me stands out here where it's like, okay, Mothra is the protector uh, of the the earth, basically. Um, and you have Degarla, who is supposed to kind of be for that reason, but is almost a corrupted version of Mothra. Yeah. In a way. Um, so, it, you know, I, I think that works. I like Mothra. I, one of the reasons I like Mothra is because Mothra always seems so heroic. Yeah. You know. That Mothra's there for the right reasons. Um, Can, does this borderline on Kitty? Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. It does. You know, I'm not going to lie with that. I mean, it's it's this one is mud, is ultra cheesy oh, compared to the cheesy. others. So, um, but I I still enjoyed it, and I enjoyed some of the things. Like I found, I felt like like a kid watching something for the first time. And going, I did oh, too. That's so yeah. cool! Like when when moth all the little Mothras form up to make. The big Mothra, or even when he when Mothra turns into Aqua Mothra, yeah. I was like, nice. Yeah, even though, like, yes, I get that where he's like, you haven't explained how this ability came to be. I'm like, no, dude, I don't care. Like, that was cool. That's like, yeah. did anybody explain like, hey, Popeye, when you eat spinach, why do you suddenly? You well, I was going to say that. Your like, arms can I say shit. that this movie itself? Like, I didn't feel like I was watching a lot. I, obviously, it was live action. Yeah. But I didn't feel like I was, I was, it felt like I was watching a cartoon. Yes. 
You know what I mean? You felt like I was watching like a Power Rangers. Or like something, something on that, on, on yeah. that level. Not like Kitty Kitty, but like, no, you know, right. enough to, you know, have like 10 year old, you yes. know, boys karate chopping something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Nope. Uh, I, you know, I really like the mythology aspect too. Um, I thought it was, it was interesting. Like I just thought it was going to be at first I was like, oh boy, this is going to be really stupid oh kitty. I thought this was going to be stupid and then as they did more mythology and they talked about like this other civilization and stuff I was like okay okay like that's interesting yeah and I enjoyed that um I also I never don't enjoy Mothra like yeah. I just I like Mothra a lot as it is like yes I wish maybe they would have done the puppetry piece a little bit better mm. and the wings were I don't know if you know the wings were really stiff the like wings were really ones, stiff the wings yeah. move differently. They kind of yeah. undulate. And then towards the end, did you see Gorgo? I saw Gorgo and the wings. Did you see the Gorgo and the wings? No, I didn't. I didn't. No, see no one did. Did you see Gorgo? That's because he's dead, you stupid child. Do you miss Gorgo? Check the wings out. No. No, I don't not miss even, Gorgo. Not even his satisfaction. And his creepy freaking eyes. I don't miss that. <laughs> no. Number two? Um, Does it make you want to watch the first one? Yes. It does. Yeah, I think I have fun watching this. Like I told you, like I, there, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. Um, and I don't really enjoy these movies very well. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a person. Like, look, I was you. You know, I was like, great, we're gonna watch another one of these. Yeah. But then I turned to you. I go, best movie ever. <laughs> like when it got real cheesy. Real it got bad. really cheesy. Like, I'm like all, yes. Look, I'm all for like just kind of just going balls out. Like whatever, we're gonna do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. You know, do, does that make sense? Yeah. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do it, just go big. Yeah. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go cheesy, make it just real go cheesy. For yeah. It. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, and don't and don't apologize for it. Right. No, I agree. So yeah, it does. It does kind of make me want to watch the first one. Yeah. Me Why too. not? I want to. I want to see more with like Mothra transitioning into Mothra Leo, or like where Mothra gives birth to Mothra Leo. Yeah. Like something like that. Because I'm, it, to me, it's almost like. Part of me wants to see the transition of like the character I love. Well, also, that like I never really was a Godzilla fan because yeah. I felt like, well, okay, Godzilla's going to get away with it. Yeah, and isn't Godzilla bad? I don't really like that, but I like someone like you said, a protector. Well, I think, or a hero. I think later and that's what on, Japanese like with Japanese culture and Japanese myths. I always like like the hero aspect of it. Yeah, right. So like that's what I like. I think later on, like Godzilla kind of did some protecting because it was more like a. Get off my lawn, kind of thing. Where okay, Godzilla's so like, like, how you dare know, you turn fuck into up. Clint Eastwood? And start talking to a chair. Fuck up my thing. I'm no. the one who fucks this up. You know, no, that's kind no, of no, no, no. Uh, but I'm kind of okay with Mothra. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, Go I used to like Gamera too. Would you? A turtle. Okay. Yeah, it makes me want to watch a the turtle. Person. There's a yeah. turtle. Yeah, and his head and arms are like pulling, that's and weird. it shoots out fire, and he like spins around. That's and weird. Flies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I, it does make me want to watch the first one. It actually makes me want to go back and watch like the old first, like the old appearances and like make my way through Mothra's stuff. Maybe. Cause, cause the kind of thing that happens is you always like kind of approach it from the Godzilla standpoint. And I'm just like, nah, just do, you know, well, maybe, maybe I want to give Mothra the attention. Um, do you think this one stands on its own? No. I mean, there's certain aspects. Like, why is he from space? Like, I don't get that. And the space but part doesn't I don't doesn't understand. Bother. Yeah, the, sta- the space the, the thing does bother me. See, it doesn't bother me because I wouldn't have known any different. Like, if you didn't know the first ones, the originals, like, if you came from space. I don't know I anything, just, about, but I don't know who these people are that are, are the, on this mini, the, the, this mini thing. Yeah, the Elias. I don't know them. That that confuses me. The Elias are the ones that would, confu- would yeah, confuse that me. That confuses me quite I'm a like, lot. like, who the fuck? Like, and even this one, like, I knew of, I always knew the, the twin ones, but then all of a sudden, like, a third one showed up, and I'm like, who the fuck yeah, are you? I don't, that confused me. And so, no, I don't think it does. Yeah. Um... Would you reboot, continue, or cancel? Um, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna have these monster or these kaiju movies, you're gonna you, you have to have Mothra. Yeah, there's no question about it now that I've seen some version of Mothra. 
you're going to have to have. So I say reboot. Yeah. Because because that's what Godzilla to me is missing. You know what I mean? Godzilla yes. always misses like it's always like too dark in a way. Well, God, uh, after a while, Mothra just like showed up all the time with Godzilla. Because it was yeah, but protecting not, not in, like the Roland Emmerich and like the new no, stuff. No, to no, me, no. I'm I'm thinking about that, right? Oh yeah. And yeah. you never have Mothra. And I'm, to me, like these are too like it's always too dark for me. Like it's always like they can never win because Godzilla is always there and like yeah. Godzilla's gonna lay an egg and, and cause a sequel that will never happen. Yeah. Thank God. Um But no, like I think about like in you know, some of the older ones, it was almost like to me. I looked at it almost like a good cop, bad cop kind yeah. of thing. Like you had Godzilla, who's like, oh, "I'm gonna kick somebody's ass." Mm-hmm. Mothra's like, "Hey, buddy, do it the right way." You know, like he was kind of there to like help and do things. And oh, like, okay, but came from the right place, and you know, even though they kind of, I don't know, like I was kind of looked at it. But I, like, I'm really excited about this like new Godzilla King of the Monsters thing. And part of me is a, if they kill Mothra in that movie. I will watch this whole series burn. Like, I don't care. I will end all of it. But that's uh, what I mean. Don't be dark about it. No, 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 no. Um, like, don't be, don't be like DC dark about things. Yeah, right. You know, but part of me hopes like if, if they have this and it goes really well, I know they have Godzilla versus King Kong, but like if they have this, part of me is like, oh my God, could we have a Mothra, a new Mothra movie? Perhaps. And, I would be down. Like, oh, I would just love. But that's part there you of. Go. So you say reboot. I would say reboot. Okay. Yeah. Um, into the monster verse. Mm-hmm. Um, some of your experience mm-hmm. in sure. two words. With no explanation, I say Japanese Goonies. You bastard. <laughs> Is that what you were going to say? That's what I was going to say. Well, then there you go. Those are your two words, too. Because I, I Japanese went, Goonies. I went. When they got to the shore, I went. Is oh, there's no explanation. Japanese you don't need goonies? to explain it. Don't explain what you, it. I said, <laughs> Japanese I said goonies. We were watching it. Anyway, yeah. um, can I say Japanese Hardy Boys? <laughs> <laughs> Three words. Okay, it's, okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, I would say. Uh, no, you can say Japanese Goonies too. I would say, um, kind of in a way, the sloth chunk is in there. Yeah, you know all the people are there. That's God. That's true. Yeah, Martha Plimpton, she's there too. Oh yeah, yeah, they're all there. The Pilvaras, the Mama Fratelli. Yes, it's all there. <laughs> it is all there. No, I would say um, uh, the two the two henchmen guys. I mean, it's true. They're all there. I would say, um, Warrior Heart. Why? Oh, ooh, okay. Go yeah, ahead. Because it's like it's a warrior. Like obviously, Mothra is fighting. It's fighting to protect the Earth. But like you get, there's so much heart around it, and it's like to me, Mothra is just it comes from a positive place. It's not yeah. about knocking and drag, knocking and dragging out fighting. It's it's fighting in a different protecting, way. Yeah, it's protecting. Yeah, it's protecting something. Fighting for protecting. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that. It's not about like. You crossed my, you know, you you came onto my territory, bitch, and like going after him, like Godzilla. right, and that's why I've I've kind of seen now why you like Mothra, yeah, and that's what I kept saying, yes, that there is this protector aspect of it that that, that I think is is pretty cool about it that we need more of Mothra. We need is, not to have this darkness of Godzilla movies. For, for those of you who are Come comic book fans, Mothra is Faith from the Valiant storylines, basically. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, when yeah. everything is dark, there's that one yeah. who has all the heart. Who does. Japanese faith. Yeah, that's my two awesome. words. <laughs> all right, all right. So we are. That's uh, that's our second kaiju movie, but we're doing one more kaiju movie. Yes, we are. Jeremy, what is that movie? Pacific Rim. Pacific. Whatever that rim the, uprising? Is uprising. Uprising. Yes, <laughs> it was like uprising. Pacific Rim. Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. Electric Boogaloo, yeah. Um, no, Uprising. Yeah, from the sequel to, obviously, Pacific Rim. Yes. So, Which I think came out 2017, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you're right. Like, I think we did a good job. We did 50s, now we're doing 90s. Yeah, 60s, 90s. 60s, and 90s. And 
teens. Today's hits, 60s, 90s, and aughts. No one says the aughts like that. Let's do we're out of the aughts now. Yeah, we're out, we're out we're of the, the aughts. We're almost, yeah. yeah, we're almost in the teens. You're almost out of the teens, too. So there you go. Um, where can people find us, Jeremy? Um, people can find us at uh, the Duke's Podcast.podbean.com. It's true. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. A lot of those podcatchers we are on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also find us at nophonynetwork.com as well as many of our other podcast mates. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, please join our Facebook uh, group. So we have a lot of things we post through there. Uh, and then uh, on Twitter, uh, you can uh, follow us at Deuce Podcast. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so from the Ampersand Studios, we're going to say the sequel is King. Good night. <laughs>